she's patting my face, telling me she loves me. As we get started, I told her, I told everybody, my body's getting old. And she said, no, you look great. Oh yeah, sure. With all these fat wrinkles. Honey, come on. <laughs> okay, day 19, it's fat day. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm starting off really bad, aren't I? Day 19, December 19th, the title, the word. The scripture is found in John 1, 1 and 14. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of the only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. So John, who referred to himself five times as the, the disciple whom Jesus loved, John never uses his own words, his, his own name, um, gets right to the point in his gospel, the book of John, what took him three years to figure out, that is the fullness of who Jesus was, he wrote in the first three verses. Right here, this is the book of John, right here at the very beginning, he says, which we have seen with our eyes. So he's testifying that he has actually seen Christ in his resurrected form and which we looked upon and with our hands have handled, they've touched him and he is called the word of life. The most important thing we need to know about the word is found in John 14. The word became flesh and dwelt among us and we have seen his glory. Glory as the only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. So he he bears testimony because he has seen, seen the, the glory himself. of him. Yeah. And later was translated. Right? Translated, that's exactly right. right. So, I would wonder what that would be like. Wouldn't that well, be maybe amazing? Maybe someday we can. So John wants his reader to know right away the identify the identity of this man that Jesus Christ was with God and was God and was the creator of the universe. Perhaps John chose to use the word word because of his close relationship with Christ. He came to know both Christ's words as the truth and Christ himself as the truth. So the first verse in the book of John could not be written in simpler terms or more weightier meaning. Yes, John Tina is telling the entire world that Jesus is the word. He is the accurate, it is an accurate declaration. Not only that he was with God in the beginning and that the first he was the firstborn of heavenly father, spirit and heavenly father spirit children but that he himself was invested with the power and rank of godhood and that he came into the world that he created and dwelled among us as men I, I wonder what point he actually recognized who he was because wow. he came with the veil over him but he great he grew in grace day by day must have been. That would be amazing to yeah. know more about that. Well, Someday. The, the heading of chapter one of Moses states that worlds without number created were created by the sun. And if we go to verse 32 in um, Moses 1, it states, And by the word of my power have I created the worlds, which is mine only begotten son. So the title word is also... Uh, the word of my power, which gives it even more meaning. Didn't James Talmage say something about that? Yeah, he, he oh, I have this quote right here. He said, oh. James Talmage wrote about this title. The Father operated in the work of creation through the Son, who thus became the executive through whom the will, the commandment, or the word of the Father was put into effect. I like that became the executive yeah, I do. through the will of the Father. It puts it in terms that it we does. understand. Yeah. At that time, uh, at the time this was written, he was a member of the Twelve. President Kimball wrote in a talk about the Word, 
and his protective powers. And he likened it to... But wait a minute, study before you go on there. So I did not realize that it did dawn on me that the, the title, the word, or the word of my power, I didn't relate it with protective powers, but it certainly makes sense that it would. So in this particular quote, President Kimball is likening that title to these particular things. You like things. grease on a swimmer's body or a heavy rubber suit for a diver who's going to go deep, a bulletproof vest. That's a great one. One of a heated home, one of per, a person's heated home. I love that. He didn't say a heated shower, but I love a, a heated <laughs> shower. A protection from winter's cold. A deep shade of smoke glass modifying the withering heat and burning rays of the yeah, sun if we that, look at an eclipse. That, that, is, that is really descriptive. That's a great descriptive yeah. description. I love the primary song, um, Scripture Power. Remember when Scripture I, Power yeah. <laughs> keeps yeah. me safe from sin. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm Scripture <laughs> Power. I got to stop. Do you remember our kids singing that song? Oh, yes, uh, absolutely. I remember teaching the kids that song in, in primary, and we had a, a book of scripture with us. We'd and always we, raise it up. And no, we, the power that we get each time we read. Read. And then, and then scripture power. Anyway, that was a really fun song to learn and to sing. But I love that because the, the one line about the word, which I hadn't picked out before, Looking at it now with the double meaning, meaning Christ himself, as well as the scriptures, because I want to be like the Savior and I can, I'm reading his instructions. I'm following his plan. And here it is. Here it is. Because I want the power, power. his word will give to me. I'm changing how I live. I'm changing what I'll be. We've seen all these titles and names and they have great meaning as we talk about christ but they also have the same effect in other ways also we wanted the names of each of our children to have special meaning didn't we yep, yep. Did. so we formed a kind of a little system of how we named each of our children you remembered how Helaman named his sons after nephi Levi. and levi yeah. so that they would always be in remembrance and they have biblical names, so we well, form the, the same thing. And you know what? Your ch parents probably have never told the grandchildren about what their names mean. So today, we're going to tell you. <laughs> I'm going to remind Sean. you. Sean. Sean is an ancestral name from Great Britain and Ireland, meaning John. One time, Sean came to me. He says, all my brothers have names from the Bible, and I have Sean. And I said, honey, don't you realize that Sean is a biblical name for John. It's the Irish name for John. Oh, he said. All right, so it ties Sean to his ancestral heritage and in remembrance of John the Baptist and John the Beloved. Then we have Aaron, the brother. He, he was the brother of great compassion, obedience, and he was a confidant to Moses and the head of the priesthood. The ironic priesthood. They can imagine how much Moses really appreciated his. Oh, brother. Aaron was his spokesman. Yeah. 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 And then there's Joseph, for Joseph of Egypt, who with confidence, trust, and strength endured countless adverse adversity to save his nation. Yep. Humphrey Strong. Humphrey Strong. Then we have Andrew. Andrew was a disciple of John the Baptist, whose testimony first led him to follow Jesus. Andrew at once recognized Jesus. He was, he was Jesus. one of the first of John the Baptist's He absolutely was, that's right. Follow. And he followed the Messiah, and later he introduced his brother Peter to Jesus Christ. And they became? Both apostles of the Master. Yeah. Now the girls have names to remind them of spiritual concepts. Celeste, obviously, for the celestial kingdom, the highest degree that we all want to obtain and to remember the steps needed to get there. Temple, everything in the gospel points toward the temple where we receive those ordinances that help us return to our Father in heaven. Uh, Deseret for the precious honeybee of Lehi's people, later adopted by Brigham Young to be the uh, 
symbol for his new territory means industrious, hardworking, and focused. Now, all of us have the letter E in our names, which tie us together with the goal of eternal, eternal life. life. The boys have L's in their names to tie them to their father for love, love of, of God, God and all that is good. The girls have T's, that's a S-T, in their names to tie them to their mother. S-T? T is in Tom. Oh. Right? Well, you said S-T. Well, I didn't T know. is after S. <laughs> well, anyway, it's a T, not a P, but a T. The girls have T's in their names to tie them all together with their mother, who trusted in God when she was just a young girl. Yes, that's true, but we set it for trust in God and seeking for the truth. As did you yes. when you were a young girl. <laughs> I missed the line. <laughs> now the boys, She wrote a great line and I just missed it. The boys' middle names relate with their father, whose middle name is Low. So we have Lamarck, Leroy, Legrand, and Ladon. So two grandfathers, a great grandfather, and the French word for the, the gift. gift. Did you hear that, sweetheart? Yeah. You're the gift. He's over there. He was the gift. Sound asleep. Well, on this day, we want you to remember not only the, the Christ title, but may each of you also remember the significance of your own names. They tie us all together toward eternal life. Day 19, Jesus Christ is the, the word. word. Have a wonderful Bye, day.